of east and west. What does that include? Oh, Lot's land. <laughs> does God know how to take care of you? Yeah. When people cheat you, yeah. go fight back. Yeah. It could be God allowed it to test character. When you are robbed, when someone cheats you in business, don't fight back. Be like Abraham. Take the hilly, rocky areas for a while because God will soon come to you and say, all that you see, including what that man took from you, will be yours. God is a good God. You know, in Genesis 14, Lot is captured by some invading armies from the other side of the Euphrates. Abraham arms his trained servants, 318, pursues them, defeats them, brings Lot back, all the women, all the possession, all the goods. And the king of Sodom, Sodom says to Abraham in Genesis 14, verse 21, Keep, take the, give me the persons and take the goods to thyself. And Abraham said, I have lifted up my hand unto the Lord, the most high God, the possessor of heaven and earth, that I will not take from a shoe latchet, which is a shoelace, a thread or shoe latchet. You know, a thread is that thing that hangs down, ladies, and you have to snip it off, or you can't leave the house. <laughs> Abraham said, I'm not even taking that. So he gave all to the king of Sodom, the king of Gomorrah, whoever else. Abraham took nothing to preserve his character. In chapter 15, verse 1, the Bible says, After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abraham in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abraham, I am thy shield, and what else? Thy exceeding great reward. God is saying, Abraham, you did right by not taking that loot, that booty from the war. You did right because you wanted to honor me. Now I am your reward. And when you have God, how much do you have? Yes. Which do you prefer? Fort Knox or God? God. Are you sure? Yes. God told Abraham, I am your reward. Amen. Don't fight people. Don't retaliate against people. Amen. Take it. Cry if you have to. Fall on your knees. Bite your lip. Even if it bleeds, don't fight back. Amen. God will bless you. Now let's go back to Genesis 13. We're in verse 15. For all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever. Verse 16. And I will make thy seed as the dust of the earth, so that if a man can number the dust of the earth, then shall thy seed be numbered. Now read verse 17 with me if you have the King James Version. What does God tell Abraham? Arise, walk through the land, in the length of it, and in the breadth of it. Finish the verse. For I will give it unto thee. Can God lie? No. What did God mean by walk through the land in the length of it and in the breadth of it? What did God mean by that? The Bible explains what God meant. The Bible says in uh, Job chapter 1, reading from verse 6, Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also to present himself. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. The same thing God told Abraham to do is what Satan said he was doing on the earth. Yes. Now what do you think Satan meant when he told God, Oh, I'm just walking up and down, going to and fro. Because that's exactly what God told Abraham to do. Why did God told, tell Abraham, walk up and down? to and fro. What was he supposed to do by faith? He was to behave as if what? The land was his. Are you with me? You don't go to and fro in somebody else's property. So when God told Abraham, arise, walk through the land, in the length of it, and in the breadth of it, what does length of it and breadth of it mean? All over it. For I will give it. In other words, Act now as if it's already yours, even though you don't yet have it. That's living by faith. Somebody say amen. amen. Most Christians, they want to see first before they believe. That's not faith. That's faithlessness. That's what God told Thomas. He said, Thomas, because thou hast seen, thou hast believed. Blessed are they who have not seen 
and yet have believed. Abraham never saw the land as a legal possession, but God told him, behave as if. Some of you will be baptized. You will put on Christ. You don't have to see a change in your clothes. Amen. You have to act yes. as though you've put on Christ. Amen. And when someone has put on Christ and believes it, the behavior changes. Amen. Amen. So Paul says, reckon yourself. Think that way. Behave that way. Amen. There's some people who think they're bad and they behave that way. <laughs> Whether they are not. Behave that way. And so God told Abraham, arise, walk through the land, in the length of it, and in the breath of it, for I will give it unto thee. Let's go to Genesis 15. It's 25 after 12. Our subject is sooner or later. Genesis 15, reading from verse 7. God has promised Abraham he would have a son. In verse 5, from his own bowels, 4 and 5. And uh, Abraham believes God in verse 6. And the Lord said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of Ur of the Chaldees to do what? Give thee this land to what? Inherit it. Here again, God repeats, I will give this land to you. Let's go to Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11. Our subject is sooner or later. We should read from verse 8 as we did earlier. Hebrews 11. As anyone said, Lord, put your words in that man's mouth yet. Ah, bless you, bless you, bless you. Don't see as many hands as I hope to, but still, God bless you. Perhaps you're planning to do it. All right. Hebrews 11, reading from verse 8. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should have to receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out, not knowing whither he went. By faith, he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for the city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. So we read about Abraham, and now we read about Sarah. Through faith also, Sarah herself did what? Received strength to conceive seed, and was delivered of a child when she was past age. Why? Because she did what? Judge him faithful who had promised. Very important words. She judged him faithful who had promised. Meaning, Sarah's conclusion was, if God makes a promise, you keep it. Your amen is lifeless. It's well dressed, but lifeless. <laughs> Let me say it again. If God makes a promise, you finish it. He, 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 will keep it. he must keep it or he's not God. Amen. Uh, you didn't hear what I just said. Perhaps it sounded disrespectful. That's not my intention at all. I don't want to be struck with leprosy. Listen to me again. If God makes a promise, hmm? he must keep it or it wasn't God who spoke. So when, Ab when Sarah and Abraham reached the place in their lives where their faith was greater than physical reality, the physical reality was Abraham's loins were dead. Sarah's womb was dead. How can life come from death when God calls for life from death? And so the Bible says she judged him faithful who had promised. Verse 13, skipping 12. Read verse 13 with me. These all die in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. These all die. Who are these? Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the wives, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel. They died not having received the promise. But did God promise? Yes. yes. Did he fulfill it? Yes. When? You have a Bible text? The Bible says, these all died what? Read Hebrews 11.13 again. Tell me what the Bible says, then correct your incorrect quiz question. Listen to the words of the Bible. 
These all died. What are the next few words? Not having received the promises. Yes, they died in faith. But they did not receive the promises. They died not having received them. Now, here's the question again. Did God promise to give Abraham the land? Yes. Did God promise it to Abraham and his seed? Yes. Did God promise him to have a large nation? Yes. When Abraham died, were those things fulfilled? Yes or no? Yes. No. No. Then did God lie? No. No. All right, sister. <laughs> okay. No. Listen to me. God cannot lie. But Abraham was dead. Isaac is dead. Jacob is dead. Sarah is dead. Rebecca is dead. Rachel is dead. And God promised. Yes, they died in faith. But still dead. When you die in faith, you're still dead. Because you decompose. What is God to do? Because he cannot lie. We have a problem. God can't lie. He made a promise. He can't lie. The people he promised, they died not having received a promise. Did God lie? No. Is the promise still secure? Yes. Are the people to whom it was promised alive? No. How will God solve this problem? He raised them up. He has to raise them from the dead. Amen. To do what? Yeah. Keep his word. Yeah. Ah, you won't miss it. Yeah. And I was so excited about that point. <laughs> you missed it? Did you hear me? Yeah. The Bible says death is the last enemy that shall be destroyed. 1 Corinthians 15, 26. Death is the worst thing that can happen. That's why it is the punishment for sin. Death is the end of everything. It is the very opposite of what God has in mind for you and for me. Death. The wages of sin is death. Every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust is conceived, it brings forth sin. Sin, when it is finished, brings forth death. Death is the end of everything. But not even death can stop God, can stop God from keeping his word. Somebody say amen. amen. Huh? So the angels are probably saying to God, Father, you made a promise to that man, he's dead. Raise him up. He's dead, but the promise is still alive. 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 Yeah. Yeah. The promise is God's word. How did God raise Lazarus? Did he speak? Yes. Did he use words? Yes. Is God's word living? Yes. yes. And the promise is a living word? Amen. And sooner or later, Abraham has to come up to receive a promise from a God who cannot lie. Amen. My brothers and sisters, if God has promised you something, not even death can keep God from fulfilling his word. Amen. That's why you must trust this. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sister. Amen. Hallelujah, son, you belong to the choir. Hallelujah, son, you nice. Ah, let that sink in, let it percolate. I don't want to think of coffee, but let it percolate. <laughs> Pause with me. Do you understand why? When you doubt God, the Bible says you call him a liar. Here's a God who is so determined to keep his word, he will reverse death. Amen. To keep his word. And so the word says, bring you all the tithe into the storehouse. That there may be what? Meat in my house. And prove me now here with save the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven. You know where that statement came from? Genesis 7, the chapter of the flood. The fountains of the great deep were broken up and the windows of heaven were opened. Genesis 7, I think, verse 11. And when the windows of heaven were open, so much water came down, mingling with the water from beneath, that the whole earth was what? Flooded. Verse 21, this 20, verse 20 says, 15 cubits upward did the waters prevail, and the mountains were covered. The very highest mountain was covered by water 15 cubits high. 
Amazonas. 